Welcome to the Three Knockdown Rule. Starring Mario Lopez and Steve Kim. Presented by Hustler Casino and UFC Fight Pass. Ladies and gentlemen, the three knockdown rule on UFC Fight Pass is in effect. I'm Steve Kim, joined by my co-host Mario Lopez. And Mario, we have a very special guest in studio. Oh, excited. My guy Oscar De La Hoya is joining us. The What's champ. Up? Thank you so much, my man. So much to talk about. Incredible documentary that's going to be premiering on HBO. So much positive buzz. Great, great reviews. Oscar, you should be proud because, man, I'm so proud to be a part of it and so excited by the reaction yeah, huh you know what it's um it's 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 very emotional to like even talk about it i mean that's how good it is you know like i can't wait for people to see the two-part series yeah back to back on max um because they're, they're gonna get they're, they're gonna get you know from my perspective the the real story like uh, how i felt throughout my career yeah you know and then post career and then you know when i retired and uh, and and now you know exactly. it's like cuz what i love about it is that this documentary doesn't end with me raising my hands and oh yeah, everything is great. No, it's like it, it keeps you wanting more. Exactly, right. it's like a memoir. Well, we'll get into it's it a lot crazy. more a little bit later. But yeah, first. we have some bills to pay. But again, <clears throat> uh, you heard it. The bout sheet for today: the Golden Boy is in studio. Talk about his HBO documentary, which premieres Monday, July twenty fourth, nine p.m. Eastern and Pacific, and then part two Tuesday, July twenty fifth. And he talks about everything else going on with Golden Boy Promotions and the sport of boxing. But we must pay some bills, folks. The three knockdown rule is brought to you by the Hustler Casino. It's our favorite local LA casino and home of the most popular live stream in the world, a Southern California staple since the year 2000. Also, thanks to our sponsor and neighbor right here in Hollywood, uh, Oscar Lopez from Scalp Micro LA. It offers a unique and innovative hair loss solution for men, also known as pigmentation. It's basically a hair restoration that replicates the exact shape and size of your hair follicles by tattooing tiny particles of pigment into the scalp and it gives you the illusion really? of hair. Yeah, it can restore hairlines. It'll make your hair appear thicker. And if you've got a skin condition or any sort of camouflage, wow. it hooks you up right there. It's the highest of quality. So if you're looking for a new look this summer, you're going bald, you're just tired of being pelon out there, hit up our friends over at Scout Micro LA and mention this ad for a free consult. Yeah, if you're getting yeah, thin, cool. it'll help fill you yeah. in. Right, shit. Can you tattoo my head or anything? Oh, yeah. If you want, oh, okay. the golden dome. We got right, the hookup. Hook up. What, Scout Micro? What is yeah. it? Okay. Scout Micro, there it is. So Oscar, there's a lot to talk about here. The question I have is, why now and was it difficult to convince you to do this uh, uh, yeah no it wasn't difficult at all i mean i was i was um i was i was contemplating on doing this for a long time you know and i just never had the the literally the balls to do it um because it's scary to put your fucking life out there you oh, know? Yeah. And all everything that you've done everything you know being real and truthful and not sugarcoating anything you know and then mario um you know approached me and you know and then unrealistic with Wahlberg and, you know, we had to do it. I, I felt comfortable doing it, you know, with Mario and, and with- He trusted with, them. With unrealistic, yeah. Cause you know, I've known him forever. So um, that kind of pushed me over the top, you know, and said, okay, yeah, you know what, I'm ready. And you know, the thing is, is that um, Oscar recently turned 50, right? And it's one of those right. things that you, you come to a, a, a point in your life where you sort of pause and reflect on how you got there. And, and seeing what's uh, what's ahead. And what was so great about it, and you can attest to this because you've seen it, Steve, it's like any other sports doc you've ever seen. No one, I feel, has ever gotten this raw, this real, this vulnerable. And, you know, I, I, when we talked, Oscar uh, was like, man, I wanna, I wanna just kind of put it out there and no holes barred and uh, uh, warts and all completely vulnerable and let's do it. And I think there's such a great appreciation because whether you're a fight fan or not, you know, there's something for you Mario, to relate to. Yeah. I've said this on every show that I've been on and I'm trying to get Jason Whitlock to talk about it because I've been able to see both parts. As someone that is a connoisseur of sports documentaries, mm -hmm. I can mm -hmm. tell you this is a five-star blue chip yeah. production. Thank you. Kudos That's to you guys. Right. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, really, I looked at this and like, you don't even have to be yeah. a boxing fan. Right. And I'm going to tweet about it that even if you don't like Oscar, you will come away with this right. thinking, 
You know, he's not the guy I think he is. I think you'll actually come sure. away more sure. appreciative of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And I've, I've said this. I'm not a celebrity, and I wouldn't want to tell even my close friends certain secrets. <laughs> you're a celebrity, and yeah. you're telling the whole world. How sure. difficult was that? Yeah, it was. And look, I mean, um, um, I, in order to do this, I obviously I had to be ready. Ready emotionally and um even spiritually, like I had to be good with myself to do this, you know. Because if I was, if I was still fucking around, I, I, sorry, I, I don't no, you're like good. No, no, keep if going. If I was still fucking around, <laughs> if I was still, you know, partying and doing this and that and and being irresponsible, and you know, I, I never, I was never to a point in my life where I was a fuck up, you know, and 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 that to me. And, and and this is what people have to realize. Like, I have a fucking empire, right? That's that's not a fuck up. And so as 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 I was trying to get my life together, as I was trying to do all the work, you know, because yeah, I did I did go to rehab, I did do all the work with therapy and this and that. So all that prepared me for this moment. Like I'm good now. It's still a work in progress, but I'm good now, you know? So so therefore, in your head, in your mind, in your heart, you can talk about this. You can be real. You can be raw. You can be out there, you know? And so I had no problem doing it. I, it, It's scary to, to, you know, to debut on Max and the whole world's going to watch it because they're going to criticize you. Mm -hmm. But I'm good with myself now. I'm good with people watching it and then, you know, having your conclusion and, uh, and take it from there. But... At least I know that I'm good. Yeah, and that's the thing. At the end of the day, you know, I think it was important. Uh, Oscar had to fill a piece, and he said this whole process was very therapeutic, right? And you can yeah. look back, and, and you can really, you know, have this honest sort of portrayal. And I've always said, like, being his friends with um, – the uh, ups and downs of, of, of anyone's life, right? If you're a good guy, because at, at the end of the day, he, he's a good well, guy with a good heart, right? And you want to root for somebody that's like a nice dude. If you're a jerk... Yeah. And just not cool people. <laughs> yeah. Then people. Then it's a different sure. sort of. It's you know different. what I mean, Mario? Then, what was the toughest thing as a friend for you to say? Okay, we got to touch upon this now. Well, from the beginning, I, I, you know, told Oscar. I said, look, as a friend, I want to look. I'm, I'm going to look out for you. But at the same time, I think the way it's going to really resonate is if you are completely honest about certain things that are out there, right? And address them. And I think people are going to respect that because look, no one leads a perfect life. All right, and we all, you try to be young, yeah. good looking, a millionaire, have chicks thrown at you all the time, see how you handle it. Uh, can we be honest, all these people that are saying stuff, if you had the same opportunities and you could do it privately, <laughs> you would we fuck would it all up. do yeah. it, we would, you would fuck it up. Oh God, everybody most of exactly, <laughs> we it's a monkey wrench, it's like a hard thing to balance, <laughs> We man. would just say, okay, all the cameras, put them away in the safety box, but we would all do it, we have to be honest, was it cleansing? Just emotionally to get it off your chest. Yeah, no, it was actually. I mean, and and you asked me like, why now? And I mean, think about this. I was conditioned since I was like six years old from family. Uh, everyone who watched me fight. I mean, you, you could see in the documentary like these amateur fights. They're jam packed. Yeah. yeah. Because I was already at that age, a little like a little boxing little uh, prodigy, prodigy, prodigy yeah. right? And uh, and everybody wanted to watch me, and so the pressure was on me at that at that age. So living like that for many years, and then becoming the golden boy at eighteen years old, nineteen years old. So living with that pressure for thirty plus years, and then and then retiring, and you know what happens when athletes or celebrities, whatever, retire? It's like shit. Now now you lose now yourself. What? Yeah. Now what? You lose your identity, and so I'm just glad I'm still alive. Like literally. Literally, I, I'm 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 very fortunate that I'm I'm blessed that I'm still alive and I survived it, because a lot of people don't survive it. No, absolutely. Yeah. Well, not only alive but thriving too, man. Correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. Kim, but he's the only fighter to make a successful transition to be a promoter. Well, let's make this clear. He's the only one that has a company that's just not a name on a banner. <laughs> Right. Okay. I've actually been to That's the office. Right. right. Yeah. I've actually been to their building. I've actually yeah. been to their events. I've actually seen a logo. Uh, like I could put SK right. on a banner. Yeah. Doesn't make me Don King. Okay. So let's be very honest. Um, here's what I found interesting about what you guys did, and this was delved into throughout the thing. And I've seen both parts. 
the dynamic with your mother I <clears throat> thought was crazy, always right? interesting because yeah. we had this idyllic thing about they were so perfect and she was so loving mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, she, and Oscar was her angel I'm like yeah. and you revealed no it really was yeah. not like no, that we don't want to get too much yeah. into it to spoil it yeah but right? sure, we want to spoil sure, it yeah. but as a teaser I, and, yes you learned I, a lot <laughs> I will say this though and not to spoil it I sensed a softness in your father towards you that he finally connect, actually acknowledged, man, my son did well. Like, mm-hmm. I love my son, no matter what happened, this is my one son, and I'm, pr- and even at the end though, he gave a message that it was fatherly advice and it wasn't harsh. Mm-hmm. When did that relationship begin to turn in that direction? Um, I think about four years ago. Yeah, four years ago, uh, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna go up to him and just fucking tell him I love him. Cause he's not gonna tell me yeah. first. You know, so so it was funny because we were like at a some party, um, uh, I think my sister's party, birthday party at, at at my father's house. And I said, fuck it, I'm going to go. I'm going to fucking hug him, put my arm around him and, 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 and tell him I love him. You had never told him that? No, never, never. He never yeah. told me. So yeah. so I was like hesitant, like, fuck, is he going to like hit me or something? You know, like scared, <laughs> you know, like so I just grabbed him. Wham. And told him, hey, I love you. <laughs> After a few drinks, obviously. Yeah, yeah um and and then he, yeah he told me and then he fucking started crying so yeah, so it geez. was yeah it's like it's it's i, I know he loves me yeah. but you just want to hear it you know yeah. mario is that it, like that with all mexican fathers it's funny that he says that because that exact similar situation i mean oscar and i same age same yeah. background first generation and everything but it's exactly it and we know our dads do love us they just i don't know if it's machismo just in their culture yeah. but they just don't share it and they just don't and that's so brave of him to to be able to do that i still haven't by the way but i'm, I'm, I'm gonna so get better i'm gonna do that like this <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna do Let's that you motivated, He's He's motivated. <laughs> and that's another great thing about the doc is that it touches on yeah, these brother. cultural different differences right within the family how he had to have both feet sort of in two worlds with this being welcomed uh, or embraced as a golden boy in the american side and at the same time still um with with uh the, his latino roots you know right. as, as a mexican too i think it does a beautiful job on that and then obviously yeah. getting into the family but it made me even kind of self-reflect and uh, yeah, I gotta mm. tell my dad. I just gotta well, hold on. I, I, I have a question. <laughs> with, I a little, wait- with a little, with uh, a little casa Mexico, little casa, right? little tequila right there. That'd be good. We could tell this story because it's not in the doc. And Mario, you've hinted at it. And I was looking forward to actually hearing this tale. What happened with you two in San Diego before oh, Third God, Fight? We've been telling the story. This did not make the doc. <laughs> this funny. did not make the doc. I'll give that the quick funny. version. This is a great story. It was his third fight, third or second fight. Third yeah, second. third. The second, third, fourth. Second, yeah, third yeah. fight. He's fighting in the San Diego Sports Arena, San Diego. Curtis Strong, I remember. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe I remember that. Anyway, yeah. we're both like 19, 20 years old. Yeah. He comes down there, hits me up. He's going to fight. But then he's got like a issue with his leg. He got like a like a really bad- Ingrown hair. Ingrown man. hair. <laughs> to, the, to the point where it hurt so bad. Walk. He couldn't walk. So he had, he had to cancel his fight. And so I was like, wow, you're going to cancel your fight. So I said, "Are you sure, bro? Are you sure?" I asked him like three times, "Are you sure?" And he's like, "Yeah, man, I can't fight. Are you sure?" And I said, <laughs> but, All right. "But but let me tell let me tell him what happened." So the we called the doctor that night. It was Friday night, right after the weigh-in. Yeah. Friday night, we're in the room. This doctor comes over. He's like eighty years old with a little with a little uh, little bag, you know, little handbag. And we're like, fuck, this doctor's gonna check me out. Shit, okay. <laughs> and he, te- he he looks at my leg. He tells me, lay on the bed. He looks at my leg and um, and tells me, oh shit, I have to operate like ASAP. That thing's infected. I'm like, oh shit, okay, because it hurt a lot. So so I tell my trainer, Robert Alcazar, I mean, fuck it, let's do it. Let's do it. You know, I, I don't think I can fight because I can't walk. And, um, and so he gets out his little scalpel. <laughs> he injects me to numb it. And he gives me a towel and he tells me, bite into it. Dang, dude. Oh, like, 1950 old school, old 50 school, style bro, right there. <laughs> no Novocaine. Towel. No Novocaine. Yeah, <laughs> fucking towel. So I'm like, fuck it. Let's do it. So he starts carving out a quarter size hole in my leg. And it's probably this deep, you know, Whew. half an inch, whatever. And so he stuffs it with God. Oh, no, he pulls out the shit. It's all pus. And, and there's a big fucking hair, like a long hair in it. There's ingrown hair all just it was nasty and so he stuffs it in with gauze tapes me up and he goes okay ready to go and he takes off and i can't walk at all i'm, I'm like in pain 
So then I hit up Mario. I hear, hey, you know what? Fuck, I'm not going to fight. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to fight. And, and then and I, said, I said, all right, you're not going right, to fight. I said, fuck, let's go to Tijuana. Because, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that was I a mean, big, that was a big, um, uh, a revolution, a bunch of bars right yeah, there. So you we hear went, about the, the, the donkey and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we party. <laughs> now you got to imagine, we're young guys, dude. And we, we ended up staying out to like six in the morning. And, you know. You, you know what the mess part about it is that I don't really remember. Like, I know. I know. I don't even know you had a good time. We had a good time. We had a good time. So then we come back, and then this guy's go back to his hotel, da da da, after we finished doing what we were doing, wah wah wah. <laughs> and then he goes back, and then Roger Middleman, who Middleman, was his manager at the time, yeah. hit him up and told him he had to fight. Yeah. Right? They're all waiting for me there at the hotel, cussing me out. <laughs> the fuck are you doing? Oh my God, you're going to fight. So I had to fight in the afternoon. That was Why World of Sports. Yes. In the afternoon. ABC. So yeah. I, I was going to fight like in five hours. I mean, and still loaded. <laughs> so the drug test came back positive for tequila. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you and know, he ended up fighting, and I felt so bad that oh my god, I'm gonna derail this guy's yeah. career. That people are gonna hate me, this and that. He ends up knocking him out, I think, in the third round. Third round. I don't think he could have made it to the fourth. So that's oh actually my good. god, thank God. And I always Mario. Like, <laughs> well, here's one thing that I learned I thought was hilarious. I've always said, and I think I've said this to him: Jesus Rivera was the best trainer he ever had. I had no idea he was a Marxist. So if he would have stayed with you longer, would he, would he have give, made you give away all your money? <laughs> Is that what that would have Who knows? Who knows? I mean, he, he, could, he could have convinced me. That's for sure. But you're right. He was my best trainer. Um, he, uh, he, was a, he, was a, he was like one of these like teachers that... Like he, a Jedi, huh? Yeah, one of the last... Yoda. Yeah, Yoda. one of the last of the Mohicans, man. I mean, this guy taught you boxing, you know? And your, and your dad just didn't like his influence on you politically? Yeah, and politically, yeah. yeah. Thought, well, yeah. He, thought, well, he just, was atheist, too. He was right. atheist, yeah. No, no, he We're went Catholic, all the way. So he probably, <laughs> I mean, he might have an honorary degree from Cal Berkeley, but here's the thing. Yeah. How does your career play out if, let's say, because he even said it himself, I was almost done with Oscar. It would have sure. taken just, let's say you sure. have him for another two years. Right. How's it play out? Fuck. I mean, I, I would have been, I would have been unstoppable. Oh, well, Yeah. Because I, I, he trained me for, what, three fights, I believe it was? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would have been unstoppable. I mean, if, if you see the John John Molina fight, okay, and then and then you see the Relas fight, I believe it was. Relas and Chicanito. Yeah. yeah. The way I was boxing on my toes and, you know. Going into Chavez. Right. Going into Chavez. So I was getting into my groove, man. Right when they got rid of him, I was just like just starting. So, yeah, I would have been, I would have been deadly, man. You know, even with that said, you speak about last of the Mohicans. You really are the last of the Mohicans because I remember you defended your title one time and you fought like five times, five times yeah. in a calendar year. Which 1997. Is, which is unheard yeah. of these years. And I always say this about Oscar. He fought the best in their prime. Yeah. Never ducked anyone. Um it was always event what uh, viewing. Sure, sure. Whenever yeah. you know you came out there, big fights. It, yeah, yeah. You know it was awesome, Oscar. And that that appetite that you had to want to stay busy, to want to fight the best all the time, it feels like it's lost now, man. Oh yeah. It feels like I mean that's got to be frustrating as a promoter now. It is because these young kids. I don't know if it's the influence from social media or other people in their ears, but they don't have. I mean, you had Aram and you had people sure, in yours, sure. but you still, you know, were the captain of the ship, and you yeah. and you wanted to be as busy as you can. But at what point did like that no longer happen with fighters? Hmm. Man, I have a theory. Um, you have a th what's your theory? I what's think. Your theory? Well. As the game got more divided with the networks, and then the fighters got trapped in one network than with budgets. And I also think what happens, a lot of mismanagers are in the business now. People, like you said, whisper in the ear, sure. who think that you should never take less money than before. And it's like, no, you always have to move forward. So these guys, if they have an opportunity to stay busy and you're yeah. fighting me for 80%, they say, no, no, we need more money. So then you know this for a fact, as a promoter, sure, you can't sure. even discuss sure. taking pay cuts anymore for tune-up <laughs> fights. No, you can't, but... But it must happen, you know, because like, for instance, I remember fighting for a shitload of money in one fight. And then I would have to go back to HBO with a budget and fight for less money. And I didn't have a problem with that whatsoever because I knew, okay, the lesser opponent. But it's the exposure. The, yeah, And that happened with Kamau. Let me tell you a story about 97. The, right. I did a story with both Oscar and Aram. So one of the things that's keeping fighters from not being active is the minimum contracted amount. So whether you fight me, Mickey Mouse, King Kong, all these guys get a certain amount. And it, that actually 
dissuades a lot of promoters from keeping guys active because they're like, oh, they won't budge off the minimum. Bob and Oscar <clears throat> both told me in 1997, well, every fight was a new negotiation. Mm-hmm. And they just discussed the value of the fight and we'll work sure, off of yeah. that. Well, it and was then big- when he went back to Kamau on HBO after Purnell, of course he took a pay cut, but it was the sure. exposure. Well, right, well not exactly, just that, yeah. Oscar. And was, I understood that. You know? Right. Where well, you were I smart enough that. to see the big picture, yeah. and that's what young fighters don't sure. see. The busier you are, the more exposure there is, the that's bigger it. you're growing your brand. Yeah, exactly. You're raising the awareness level. Yep. And so every time you fight, it was getting bigger and bigger. So when right. you did have the pay-per-view, it would be even that much bigger. Huge. And, the fi- and the thing that <clears> young <throat> fighters don't see that, I, it blows me away. Right. Well, why, for some reason, they wouldn't listen to you when you're the only one that's been in that ring and been there and done that yeah. and can experience that? It blows me away. Well, Mario, it goes <laughs> it, it, it's also, it's also, sorry, it's also legacy. It's not about legacy anymore. You know, right. it's not. It's not about. It's not about your your reputation inside the ring. It's not about. It's it's about business now. It's about. You know how much can I make? Um, you know, fighting fighting once a year is gonna keep me in the limelight, and I'm gonna do other stuff. And you know, you have to think about boxing first, and then everything will come. Right, Mario, you know? exactly. I get blowback all the time when I tweet fighters need to be more active, as if I'm asking him to be Archie Moore fighting 20 times right. a year. I, yeah. I'm not. Okay, and it's I talk crazy. about this with Matt yeah. Macklin, a former fighter, who says, "Steve, keep preaching the message." So when fans come back at me and say, "Well, guys make too much money," and blah blah blah. And they're big. And I say, okay, I got a question. Do you think any fighter, even Canelo today, who actually has been busy, to his credit, a couple years ago, I said, do you think any fighter is bigger than Oscar De La Hoya in 1996-97? And they say no. So why in the world did Oscar get out there five times in 97? And in fact, in 99, he had a year where he fought Ike Corte, mm. Obacar, and then Trinidad within a 10-month stretch. Look at that, yeah. dude. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I, that's I, crazy. It is. It is. <laughs> when you I mean, I was in camp. camp. I was in camp all the time, and it was good for you. And it was great for yeah. me. Yeah. Um, and that's when you were sequestered in Big Bear. Right in Big Bear yeah. in the mountains. So yeah. And and what's crazy is that um, you know, you you take a look at Canelo, you take a look at the top guys like the Bronze Bomber or you know even Errol Spence and 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 Crawford, which I love. Yeah. It's a great fight. Um, I have Crawford by the way. Hmm. Uh, winning, but it's like if, imagine those guys fighting three times, four times a year. How how big they would be? Yeah. How important they would be for the sport of boxing? Exactly. How how much more the sport would grow? Well, no, you did your part. Look, last year I did a story for your publication, Ring Magazine. Mario, you know, last year our top 10 pound for pound at the end of December of last year, me and Doug Fisher decided to do a story. Our top 10 pound for pound at the end of the year, the Ring Magazine. Pound for pound list, they fought a total of 13 times, 10 guys. Wow. 10 guys? 10 guys fought. So they, they didn't right. even average a fight and a half. They each fought 1.3 times. <laughs> now, go back to 1993, our top 10, because Chavez and Tony took tune-up uh, fights. They fought 38, 39 times. Yeah, so it, it is an issue, and that's the problem. It's a because issue. Oscar will tell you, and I've, I've talked to this with Top Rank. I've talked to this with Eddie Hearn. If you do not guarantee these fighters these minimum uh, uh, purses, then you can't sign them. That's the problem. It's so you're, short-sighted, though. Just like it's so short-sighted um, when you're looking at a career and building yourself as a brand. Yeah, because people don't get to see you. You don't right. get to 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 uh, have exposure yeah. where you're recognizable. That's why Oscar was able to sort yeah. of uh, transcend the sport. So I got to imagine it's incredibly frustrating for you. Oh yeah. Speaking of a couple of your fighters, um, Oscar, I want to get into. Um, so Virgil Ortiz, man, he. Hmm. It, I think it's three fights in a row now, right? Because yeah. of related health issues. Sure. Was it? But it, was it a, just a case of that he's simply outgrown mm. it? He should have maybe moved on sooner. Didn't have a nutritionist, or what can you tell us? I, I I really don't know, because um, I'm not there. But I I imagine it's his diet. You know, I, he's a big kid, but I've seen bigger kids fighting at 147. I just don't. It might be his diet. I mean, he's a hard worker. Yeah. I mean, his his father and 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 Virgil, they're a great team together, and they 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 work hard. That I know. It might be his diet. You know who knows, but I think he should move to 154, and we're gonna sit down with him uh, very soon. I'll be, uh, I'll be, uh, I'll be at the uh, Jake Paul fight um, with Nate Diaz. Yeah, August oh, yeah, that's, 5th. that's in Dallas. That's yeah, right. August fifth. So I'll go down there, and then we'll go visit uh, Virgil, and we'll 
will map out his uh his next few fights when did you when you were in san antonio when did you get a sense like something's wrong here bro i i literally i flew out i was i got on the plane okay me and holly were on the plane my girlfriend and literally the plane took off and i get a call from eric <laughs> Okay, as it's in the air. As it's in the air. <laughs> Turn around, land this thing. As it's in the air, I'm like, oh. And, and, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. I almost told the pilot, like, just land the plane. Like, yeah. Take we a U-turn. Yeah. Oh, my well, gosh. It's crazy. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'll, you never miss weight, did you? Never. Yeah, I, yeah, I never if I If I did, if, if I remember one time I was fighting um, Troy Dorsey at 130 30, pounds. Yeah, yeah damn. In, I in Vegas. That. In Las Vegas, I underneath can't George you Foreman, you're big for 130. Yeah, underneath <laughs> George Foreman and Tommy Morrison, I think it was. Oh wow! Yeah, that's old school. Yeah. So <laughs> I I got on the scale and I was dead. I was dead. I made 130 and a and an eighth or a quarter or whatever it was, and they were like, "Nope, you gotta fucking make it." So I go outside. It's in July in Vegas. Oh god! Oh. So it's a thousand degrees. A thousand degrees. <laughs> I run around. I think it was at the Thomas and Mac. So I I go outside in my sweatsuit and I run around the Thomas and Mac, like oh. two times. I was a professional. I had to do what I had to do. You know, it's like Mario. I mean, well, that's, that's the it. only there's, time. That's the only time. That's I it. It. Wow! And that was only and because there, yeah. there's two fights really. One at the scale. Oh yeah. And one in the ring. Mario, right here's the thing, and we've talked about it with Virgil. I know that Virgil has turned down opportunities to have tune-up fights in between. If you look at the breaks in between the fights, and all fighters put on a lot of weight. And that's the thing. Look, Boots Ennis is actually a bigger frame guy. Is he? Yeah, yeah and, and Boots just recently fought in January. And guess what? In his last fight, he looked spectacular, yeah. and he made 145 and a half. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And, I, and I've, I've said this, and Oscar, tell me if I'm right or wrong. It is easier to stay in shape sure. than to get in shape. No, exactly, right? exactly. If you stay in shape, you don't have to. You don't have to make weight. You don't. You don't worry about the weight. You go to camp to learn. You go to camp to right. to to study. To, work on your to, craft. You work on your craft. You don't go to camp lose to lose weight. And that's what fighters do today. Is they go to camp just to lose. You're you're spending the first three quarters of camp losing weight. It's a fat camp. Yeah, it's a fat, it's camp. A fat camp. I mean. I don't. I don't mind saying this. A lot of fighters today are unprofessional. They're they're they don't take it serious. They they fighters are are, you know, they take it for granted. Yeah. You know, there's there's not there's, as disciplined. There's so many fighters now. So many Showtime is televising fights. Uh, the zone. Uh, the zone. ESPN. And ESPN. Um, there's so many fighters now. It's like and and and. A lot of these fighters, yeah, they don't have the opportunity Oscar, to fight re on a regular basis because they're they're not they're not ready, they're not prepared, they're not right. training. Okay, but they're let's not, get into you know? human nature though. But let's say sure. you're a young fighter and you literally have get, gotten out of the ring and you want to fight in a month, but yeah. your matchmaker or your manager says, "Okay, look, the next date's not till seven months." Isn't that the chicken or the egg quandary that we go through that that we are causing this behavior? And I, I agree with you. A lot of kids are not professional, but you have to give an impetus to these young fighters right. to actually get into the gym, though. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's no, all I'm sure. saying. No, it's true. I mean, first of all, the fighter should. Th this is his job, his livelihood. Mm -hmm. You should stay in the gym every. Like we, Hopkins is a man, great partner, man. He, he works out every day. By the way, fighters, <laughs> yeah, fighters respect him and love him, and so I. So Hopkins, um, what he does is he calls every fighter that we have now, and tells them, look. If you fight, and, and Hopkins is no fucking nonsense. He tells you the way it is. <clears throat> it, he'll call him and tell him, when you fight on Saturday, you should be in the gym on Monday. You know? Yeah. And he scares him, and he tells him. Yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. and they're actually listening. He so, did that, by the way. I remember, I remember we were at the fight together. Uh, it was like two fights ago for Shane Mosley Jr., and he won, but then he got out yeah, of the yeah, ring. Yeah, Hopkins, yeah. I overheard him telling him, Hey man, you look like shit tonight. <laughs> he, goes, he literally just what he got. He goes, you look like shit tonight. Oh, yeah. You got to work on this. Well, I was he like, told, damn. He didn't even give him thirty seconds to no. chill. Right. He told Kid Austin in his last no. fight, Kid Austin, um, he was like, "What the fuck are you doing? No. You look like shit." 
Wow. And really? I'm like, and so he, he tells you the way it is. You know? So wait, you're the good cop, and he definitely, <laughs> uh, he's the beehive. Yeah. He's the beehive. Yeah. I mean, God. That's crazy. I've always so, said to boxing fans, you want to meet beehive at a fight week? Go to the fitness center at 8 o'clock in the morning. He's yeah. literally there every single yeah. day on fight week. So we talked about uh, Virgil for a second, and what's the latest now on Ryan Garcia? Speaking of Dallas, he too is also in Dallas, right? Uh, I believe he moved there. Yeah, did he move to, to, to yeah. start training? I believe he with, moved there um, to start training. Um, uh, yeah, so so we're uh, we're in the process of uh, of setting up his next fight. You know, um, if, if we can sit down with uh, with his team soon, uh, we we have several opponents for him uh, to choose from, and then we'll take it from there. Oscar. But I'm, I'm hoping that he can fight in October. Uh, and then, and then, uh, and then again, maybe like January. Oscar, I know you can't say too much about it because there is a legal issue, but let's go back a little bit. I have a theory that once he turned down that Mercito Hesta tune up in January, I said to myself, he's not serious. I don't like it. I remember when you fought yeah. Chavez the first time, sure. you fought Daryl Tyson. Daryl Tyson on the same card with Chavez. And he fought the pink hat. Yeah. And I thought that was important to promote the event, but sure. it got you in rhythm. When he said, or when his team said, we're not doing this, did you say to yourself, ooh, I don't uh, like this? I don't like it at all. At all. I mean, uh, Tank Davis took a tune-up fight, so yep. he's going to be sharp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, Ryan Garcia is going to be out now for, what, how many months? Fought in August or July he against fought, Fortuna last yeah, year. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, so almost it's, it's, it's nine, ten months. Nine, ten months. That's too much fighting Tank Davis. And then, and then his team decides to 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 go with the rehydration clause and mm. this and that and i'm like you know what it's 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 over right here it's over he it's like you're literally losing the fight before you even step inside the ring yeah stacked all the deck yeah. uh, against him as far as um and i'm sure you can't be specific but are we looking at guys like raleigh's or or uh teofimo or sure those, those they're on the list they're on the okay. list all right <laughs> can that relationship ever be repaired I I'm not holding my breath, but um, I mean you never know. I'm just gonna keep doing my job, you know, and 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 um, and and all I need is for for them to honor their contract. That's it. Oscar, everything that you've been through, and this is interesting because I think you're like that uh, the grandparent syndrome. They always tell their kids, oh, wait till you have kids. You may hate me, but when you have kids, you're gonna figure this out, right? It's a good analogy. Um, right, you're you're gonna go through it soon. <laughs> Here's the thing. You, at one point, had a great relationship with Bob. Then it fractured. Mm -hmm. Then you thought Bob's the worst human being ever. And then I saw your post today, and you said, Bob, you were the guy. Sure. Do you understand better now his point of view after everything you've been through as a promoter? Yeah, well, well, I didn't have a bad relationship with Bob. It was just that one incident that took place. I mean, when he made more money than I did in, in the Trinidad fight, mm -hmm. I had questions. Mm -hmm. And I found that out. So... That's when I started asking questions, and um, and and then you know we had a we had a contract that lasted for seven years, which is illegal here in California, and so I fought it and I won, and um, and then we went our own way. But we never had a a, a difference of of you know we weren't we weren't enemies, you know. Yeah. Um, there was no beef. No, there was no beef whatsoever. I just I just feel I just feel I don't know. There's too many people in fighters' ears. You're you know, exactly right. Whispers. That's it. It's all whispers. You know, it's all noise. People don't. People think they that that they know what's going on. They they, they really don't. They, you know? It's exactly it. They don't know the sport. And they're they influenced. Don't. Right. It's so easy. It's crazy. It is, and it's frustrating to see. Even just as a fan outside, I'm like, why are you listening to that guy? <laughs> why are you listening right. to him? As like I have, I have, <laughs> I have the most experience. Okay. To, to exactly tell you what to do and what not to do. Like, I have, I literally have the blueprint. Right. On, on how mm. to live like a champion, how to win world titles, how to... I mean, I can't fight for you or... Mm. Um, but... But the steps you need to take. Yeah, the steps you have to take. <laughs> what's going to happen when you win a world title outside the ring, your popularity, women are going to approach you, this, that. Like, I've been there. Like, ask me. Get, get advice from me. You know? All right, we're here at the three knockdown rule on UFC Fight Pass. Steve Kim Mario Lopez with our special in studio guest, Oscar De La Hoya. We'll be back after word from our sponsors.
Welcome to the big leagues, kid. $1.2 million. Oh. <laughs> and I'm losing in this fucking game. What the fuck? This is a 400k flip. If I win by the way, you get 10 grand. back on the three knockdown rule and ladies and gentlemen if you'd like to get involved with the three knockdown rule and sponsor our fine program we still have some slots available please reach out to us by emailing info at boxbid.io once again that's info at boxbid.io boxbid.io is an online platform that is launching soon that helps public figures and professionals in the world of boxing get sponsorships we are proudly working with boxbid.io um oscar another one of um Another one of your uh, 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 fighters, that uh, really nice guy, and I'm excited to see him fight. And I want to put my promoter hat on for for a second. Oh, you called this one a couple and weeks I, ago. I, yeah, I, I've been pitching it for the last few weeks. But please tell me, there's a possibility that you would entertain having Mungia fight Berlanga, because I think that could be such an exciting yeah. fight, fight of the year, Mexican Gee, versus yeah. Puerto Rican, yeah. two fighters. And, I think it'd be great. And him and Eddie Hearn on the undercard. <laughs> but is that something that you would ever entertain I mean that, it just on paper it seems like it'd be an awesome fight just as a fan I want to see it yeah it's a great fight no yeah, it's a right? great fight um, look we've been talking to uh, we've been talking to to, 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 to Samson Lekowitz okay. Lekowitz oh we've been talking to Samson to uh, to do to do Mungia Benavides uh, versus Benavides Ooh. okay uh oh Wow! You're right, right. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. So there's there's a there's a there's a decision we have to make. Um, you know, uh, if if we go with Benavides, and that that'll be an easy fight to make, actually. Oh, really? Oh. It'll actually be an easy fight to make. Um, would the Berlanga one be difficult to make? I, I don't think it would be, but we're just you know we're waiting for an offer. That's basically it. I mean, and in these fights, look. This is this is where we have to obviously this is where I have to put my promoter hat on, and protect my fighter and say, look, we're the A side, um, we control the promotion, and uh, and and that's that's basically it. We're we're like close in making those two fights. It just oh, it's wow. just a matter of who wants it more. His mm. last one was so much fun, man. That was like a, oh, he's a fun fighter to watch. He's a fun fighter Ooh. to watch. That, that was, was uh, that fight. was fun. That was fun. Yeah. Mar, I have a question for you. You, you, I've seen you out and about, and you're a man of the people, but you also have security. I just, what would you do if you're Devin Haney? You're in a car full of homies. There's a gun. No one takes the rap for him. Now, if you, Oscar, would you have said, "Hey, fellas, I pay for all the Patron tonight. Someone, I'm yeah, not right. going down." So, somebody, somebody, take the blame. My Shit. question is: Should he just always have security, or or would someone say, "Said, okay, I'm going to take this one for the team." How do you handle it? I mean, look. Why in the hell are you carrying a gun if you're a fighter? It's it just doesn't make any sense. Get yourself one security guard because I, I only have one. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, depending on where I go, right? Um, I have one guy, and he's always standing in the back. He's always like, you know, he's not there, whatever. Um, but I would never carry a gun. Why? Why carry a? You're a world class athlete. Think about that. You're a world class athlete. Yeah, you're right. You have all these bodyguards and this and that. Like somebody take the rap for him. Come on, <laughs> yeah, come on, man. That's come on. You're he, gonna get the bail. He, he pays you a lot of money. <laughs> you know, Jesus, it's crazy. I don't know. I just I don't understand this this fame thing today. You know, it's just it's different. It's, I mean, you know, they make all the news and this and that, and uh, maybe it helps their career. I don't know. These I don't kids know. like to like to. As they say, flex for clout. Yeah, <laughs> flex for clout. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I think that's it. Yeah, it's and and but it's the wrong it's the wrong flex. You know? Absolutely, it's like, come on. You're exactly right. It's Your thoughts one. on Spence Crawford? You gave us a prediction. Tell yeah. me how you think that fight plays out, though. Look, I I, I saw Spence uh, 
firsthand um, for many years, literally building his career, right? Uh, when we promoted all those fighters, uh, all the PBC fighters that are champions now. Um, and I always thought that Spence was like Sugar... He reminded me of Sugar Ray Leonard. Just a bit. Just a little bit. Or he could have been like Sugar Ray Leonard. That's... When when we were promoting him, I was thinking, you know what? Let's build this kid like Sugar Ray Leonard. Let's let's yeah. let's have him be the clean cut, nice kid, can fight like a like a beast. Um, and so his style is, I believe, one dimensional. Yeah, you know, he's he takes his time. He's a strong. He's strong as an ox. Mm -hmm. He can knock you out with any hand. But he's not a Crawford where he's elusive, mm. where he has great footwork. Makes adjustments. Where he can, yeah, he makes adjustments. He can throw combinations, you know, three, four, five punch combinations and, uh, and, and change it up and change up his game plan. So I just feel, look, if Crawford is, is, is on point for 12 rounds, there's no way he can lose. And keep this in mind, Errol Spence has not fought since April of 2022. Well, there you go. That's there's another that. thing. There I, you go. You know, there you I go. thought Crawford made a great tactical move, Mario, by facing Avanesian in December, because one of his camp members thought, they're trying to rust us out. So I don't care what anyone thinks of this fight, we're gonna fight. Yeah. And I think that makes a difference. No, Oscar's points are right. Yeah. And then he's sort of ambidextrous, he can fight Southpaw, and he's a mean dude too. Mean. Oh, he's mean. He's mean, he's mean. when he wants to oh, yeah. finish you, he, he comes out yeah, yeah. there he's and- He's a good uh, finisher. Yeah. Exactly. One fight I wanted to get your uh, uh, take on. <laughs> Tyson Fury oh. <laughs> is now gonna fight in Ganu. It's sort of a novelty fight. Obviously we wanted to see him sure. fight uh, Usyk and stuff. You know, I don't mind these fights. They're, if they're fun, if he still ends up fighting like Usyk later on, yeah. but it seems like what we talked about these fighters huh. choose to fight few and far between but i mean th I, these are fun are you a fan of these or well i, I was i was uh, very critical in the the in the mayweather uh mcgregor because mm -hmm. i really didn't understand like what the hell are they doing here mm -hmm. but i understand now that it's it's just a money grab sure and i have no problem with no issue with it it's fine it's gonna be entertaining i mean to see two huge guys Big in the dudes, ring yeah. you know I mean, it's going to be pretty entertaining watching Tyson knock this guy out mm -hmm. because that's what he's going to do. Absolutely. I mean, there's no chance um, uh, this guy has a chance. What's his name? Uh, Francis Ngannou. No, Francis, no. If it Francis, was MMA, yeah. I'd be interested, but it's not. Yeah. And <laughs> no, if it was MMA, yeah, then then and and Ngannou would would have. Yeah. The advantage. Like when Ali fought Antonio Inoki, people forget right. Inoki. Kind of did like crab, like he was kicking him in the leg. It was yeah. kind of mixed martial right, arts. Right, yeah. Bob Aaron told me that Ali got jacked yeah, up. His <laughs> leg was. And, and did you know? Here's the thing that's uh, we talk about the difference in the game. So Muhammad Ali in 1975 goes through the Thriller in Manila, the most grueling heavyweight fight ever, right? Yeah. Um, in 1976, the year he fought Inoki in that novelty, he had four heavyweight title defenses too. Damn. So it's really not the same thing. That's what I'm sure, saying. Sure, you're right. That's what I'm you're saying. Right. If you're able to squeeze it in while you're still handling yeah. the mandatories and keeping busy, then it's different. How much of a shot do you give Usyk in that style against Fury and that mobility and the southpaw stance? <sighs> Look, I, I think I think that I think that Tyson Fury is just a bigger version of Usyk. You know, he's a bigger, lankier, taller version of Usyk, and and I think it's going to be hard to hard to beat Tyson. Yeah, I think it's going to be hard to beat Tyson. Tyson right now is in in his in his zone in his element. He's he's like focused. He you know he's he takes care of himself. I mean, to to the best of his abilities, right? Mm -hmm. He doesn't have the best body. No, no, yeah. he's built like you a know. bag of milk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he's so athletic. But he's athletic. Yeah. Yes. Great boxing and, IQ. And, yes. and, and he has great boxing IQ. And I think that he's yeah, he's gonna be tough to beat because he's on his toes. Mm -hmm. You're exactly and right. we got to preview this fight. I'm gonna set my alarm up early, and I think everyone's every hardcore boxing fan's gonna want to yeah. watch yeah, this yeah, from yeah. Japan next Tuesday on ESPN Plus. Stefan Fulton, the unified 122 pound champion against the monster. Inoue, any thoughts on that, Oscar? I love, I love Inoue. I do, and I think, I think um, um, Martin is it? Uh, Fulton, Steve F Fulton, Fulton from Philly. Steve Fulton from Philly is a great fighter. Actually, mm -hmm. I really like that style for both guys. I think, I think, uh, I think, uh, I think it's a, it's a toss up. 
I really do. I think for the first time, Inoue is going to be not over his head, but he's going to be in front of somebody that uh, is, is going to be slick and, and, and hit him back right. and not be afraid exactly. of his power. So it's it's an interesting fight. Yeah, I'm excited about that one, too. You know, Inoue is the guy moving up to his third or fourth weight class. Here's the difference. Sure. Um, Fulton's not a great puncher. Inoue, I think his power will still carry up. The one thing about Inoue, and I've talked to guys that have fought him, He's actually fast. He's actually got that quick twitch mm, mm. rhythm. And Antonio Nieves, who fought him at the Carson, said, Steve, I've never seen a guy that fast, that powerful. And Rudy Hernandez, Chicanito's mm. brother, who's a staple in Japan, said, Steve, this is the best Japanese boxer ever. I've never seen a guy with his tools mm. and his reflexes. So I don't know if it's going to be Trinidad Hopkins, to be honest with you. It's got a, he's got a lot of torque in his punches. Let me ask you, Oscar, when you're moving up in weight, Throughout your career, like we talked about you starting at 130 yeah. and then 135 and what have you. Did you see a big <clears throat> difference, not in yourself, but in your opponents as far as, or be, or because you were heavier, you were able, your resistance was a little better, the um, your reflexes was still there, of mm-hmm. course, but did you feel the power difference? Was it, was, it, was it a big adjustment or just felt pretty natural? When I, let's see, I think when I, when I was at 130, yeah, I felt strong. I felt really strong. 35, I, I, I held my power. 40, 40 was a little shaky, a little iffy. I, I really didn't. I, I, really? I yeah, it was a little because shaky. Because at 130, it's funny, your chin got better as you had your right. legs because right. it wasn't your chin. It's the fact you had yeah. no legs right. left at exactly. times against Campanella yeah. and Narciso Valenzuela. Very, very true, very yeah. true. Um, and then when I went to 47, I, I think at 47, I was my at my best. Yeah. You, at 47. You had your legs strong. 54, I, was, I carried the, the power up there. Obviously, 60 was a whole different story, but um, yeah, those few pounds make a huge difference, man. Huge difference. Well, you, huh? Oscar. And it all depends, too, on who you fight because when you go inside the ring and you're fighting the top guys, like, there's something in you that I don't know. That doesn't carry in with you. Like maybe your power, it's you're hesitant or something because you're not afraid to get hit, but you're just more aware. Right. So it just it just changes up your your your, your game plan. Mm-hmm. Your you know your your, your approach, reflexes, yeah. everything. You know, so. Oscar. I, I'll say this. I don't think I've ever seen a fighter had to sit in a chair, slouch down like you did before Pacquiao. Yeah. If you had to do that fight again, would you just have said, okay, we're doing 152 or 53. I'm not going down to 47 because it looked like you were spent even the day before the fight. Because you hadn't fought that in a while, I remember. Eight years. Oh, oh yeah. eight years. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's been eight years. And so I, when I, it, it's crazy because I had this nutritionist that we 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 started this new diet, okay? The deer meat. You were yeah, eating the, the deer, deer meat. Rob Garcia. I eating, yeah, I, Rob I, I, Garcia. I, I was eating deer meat. And and uh, venison, uh, yeah, <laughs> venison and uh, and what else? Kangaroo meat. So Jeez. actually, yeah, how's kangaroo taste? It's it's just gummy, gamey, yeah, yeah. very gamey. gamey. Yeah, there's yeah. no flavor. Yeah, there's no flavor. Whatsoever. There's no fat in it. <laughs> but it's it's. Uh, but I I lost too much. I was weighing one forty two. Damn. Damn. Yeah, I was weighing one forty two, bro. Oh, dude, so you're like a shell of yourself. No, but but what what was crazy is that I was getting beat up in sparring against Valero. Edwin Valero. I had, oh, I had Victor Ortiz. Victor Ortiz in there who was beating me up as well because they're softballs, right? Yeah, like, man, young, strong. Young, strong. But they were, I, I've never, ever, like, my sparring sessions were the best sparring sessions ever. I loved sparring, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I looked good sparring. So when I was getting beat up, I was getting deflated. So you knew, like, uh-oh. oh, man. <laughs> well, so two weeks before the fight, so for the first time i didn't stay with my with my entire team my camp because normally we stay in one home because I, I had my my place in big bear mm-hmm. right so i told them let me you guys stay here and i'm gonna rent my own my, i'm gonna rent my own cabin so i can fuck around yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what i did was oh bro it was the last two weeks inviting girlfriends up there drinking wine Orale. yeah so i was i was like i had already given up yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you, <laughs> you knew. Checked out. i you already knew. knew i already checked out i was yeah. like i was already retired so when i went into the uh to the fight um when i remember when i was stepping up to the uh, up the up the ladders uh, the the up to the ring my legs were shaky my legs were just weak and i knew then then and there that it, it's it's over 
Oscar, here's a question that I have relating back. I've always thought of you as a really, really nice guy. I still recall <clears throat> when you fought Miguel Angel Gonzalez at the Thomas and Mac, the yeah. post hotel with Caesars Palace. Now, Mario, I don't think I've told you this story. Me and my buddy Hugo are just hanging out. We're just basically fans, just two jabronis. And I see Oscar in the middle of the casino. He literally signed out. Uh, he signed autographs for two hours yeah. in the middle of the casino. My buddy, he's from East LA. He goes. He goes, hold on, how, how long do you think he's going to be there? I said, you know what, I'd get stuff. So he went to the gift shop, got some gloves. <laughs> There's a whole mob. He was there for two hours on his feet. I, I remember don't, that. I, I was and like, I have a story, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, what the hell is this guy doing? He should be on. Like, So that's that's Oscar. No, he's always been nice, I, man. I've always noticed cool recently, yeah. though. You're letting your hands go like the 12th round of Corte on Twitter. But, but, but hold on, but check this out. Uh, yeah. So, so, oh, so he's going to tell a story yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah, so that, so that, I was there, right? You at remember Caesar's that? Palace. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I had told my team, you know what? I'm a little, I was up in my room. Mm. I was bored a little, you know, like let's go down and yeah. meet some fans. You know, um, it was a fucking circus. Yes. And so I remember bro. So I remember I had this, I had this security guard. He was a Navy seal guy. You couldn't even tell he was there. Right. Just blended, just, just blended. blended in, you know? And I remember this guy from the corner of my eye. Cause I, I, I like seeing everything, you know, from the corner of my eye, there's this white guy. Right. And he's sweating. <laughs> He's fucking sweating and he looks weird. Indoors right? in the AC. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's sweating. He looks weird. He's like shiny and and I'm I'm thinking to myself, man, hey, this guy, okay, just keep an eye on this guy, right? <laughs> Don't hug me. So all those, yeah, and he was like maybe like a fifty feet away, whatever. And so I'm signing autographs, and all of a sudden I look and he's not there anymore. And he's right here, like next to me, yeah, right? Yeah. So he shakes my hand. And he starts grabbing it and trying to break it. He's, oh, he's like trying to f oh, like geez. force my hand to twist it, and and you know my security guards got him. Third out, so he was he was trying to you know. And this Ruined. was after this was right before I think it was after the weigh-in. Yeah, so it was. I was fighting the next. Oh, day. Oh yes, right. Right. Yeah. You had, you had it was the fight before right Purnell. Yeah, so they found out this guy wanted to. He placed a bet. He wanted to break my hand. Oh my you know? damn! Jeez. Oh, that's a good story. I never oh, heard bro, that. That's crazy, crazy that you yeah, remember yeah, that. Yeah. So you try to be nice to people yeah. and look. <laughs> well, that's well, well, Mario. Uh, lately, and me and you, we exchange. Just you're letting your hands go on Twitter now. Do you ever wish you were this way? Like, you know what? I'm trying to be a nice guy, but if you want to be a jerk to me, I'm gonna let you. Because yeah. I screenshot a lot of your stuff. Hey, I'm before, not gonna lie. Before to you. he yeah, answers, but that, it's actually not me. I'm not tweeting. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, before, before he answers that, it's so funny because I told my wife the other day too. I said, you know what, Oscar kind of inspired me. Sometimes I try to be nice. Somebody said something, and I thought I'd be nice, respond back, oh, no. and he was drama. And I say to myself, fuck this guy. And so I kind of went off a little bit on him. You know, I was careful in case I got a screenshot, but I went off. I'm like, screw this guy then i did a kim and i blocked his ass oh, and i was out of you there did the, but i can i'm always nice but you know what i think is we're at the age now you know what i mean we don't, we don't need to put up with this shit we don't need to care you know what i mean because he is a nice guy yeah. but once in a while hey dude these you guys have to my one is dude and you just you can gotta check him a little bit so much mario yeah, exactly <laughs> oscar you have said you're in a good place and like you're always happy now um how much has holly meant in terms yeah. of all this well the thing look the thing with me is that I i've always been happy you know, right? Yeah. I've always, always been in a good mood. It's but good but mood. um it's now it's like I mean look, she she's my best friend. Like literally, yeah. she's my best friend and and my soulmate and you know and all that good stuff. And it's like but it's it's that she figured me out, you know? Like she figured me out. She knows what I want, she knows what I need. It's crazy. And then it's little things, you know? Mm -hmm. It's 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 little things like give me reassurance, you know, give me support, tell me you love me, you know, like just little things. And it's crazy. It's great. I mean, look, I'll tell you the, I'll tell you the truth. She's the first woman, the first woman I've never cheated on. Ooh. Yeah. We've been together two years. Bravo. Homie. It's crazy. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Like I have no urge, I have no nothing to 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 talk to somebody else or, you know, it's so easy to talk to somebody on, you know. Yeah, like yeah. I, don't, I don't want to. I don't. I don't need to. I, I have it so good, you know, and 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 we respect each other, you know. So it's it's pretty cool. It's that's it's, uh, that, and, and, but and and she she's she's a smart woman. She's hmm. she wants me to be a fucking billionaire. Yeah, she's got she's got and, you back and, 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 and great and and because I want that too. And so you know, it's like, and she pushes me, and she and she makes me better, and so it's, I'm 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 living a dream right now, and it's crazy. That's awesome, and I can honestly say, you know, as his friend coming to say, he's the happiest yeah. I've ever seen him. So it's good. When you're happy, you're a peace man. 
Yeah, it doesn't get better yeah, than that. It's all good. Brother. So just a reminder, if you want to watch this fine piece of work, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, 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 no, I'm seriously. I, I and, and, Kim's a, and Kim's a tough critic, and he don't he don't ever bullshit. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm like yeah, one yeah. of those old guys, those two yeah, old yeah. Muppets, Statler and Waldorf. I'm definitely one of them. I'm, I'm the Asian one yeah. if they had one in the middle. Yeah, you're like yeah. Michael Katz. No, oh, yeah. without the name. Oh, he loves hey, you. Hey, hey. you, you know, Good one. No, no, they had a love, they had, uh, we love to hate each other relationship. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway, the documentary called The Golden Boy will premiere Monday. Monday, July 24th, part one, 9 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, and then part two on July 25th, that Tuesday. Uh, final words, Oscar, what can we expect from Golden Boy Promotions to close out the year? Um, close out the year, yeah. We're going to bring back uh, Virgil and, and Ryan and... Uh we uh, we're doing uh, William Cepeda. I'm not sure if we announced. Come it on, yes. Yeah. Is he going to fight Mercito? I believe so. Yeah. September 9th. Yeah. That's oh, a that's good gonna fight. Ooh, Which is going to be here in LA. Okay, maybe not. Uh, uh, well, we'll see. TBA, yeah. TBA we'll see. on TBA, the day. TBA. TBA. And then but I saw Alexis Rocha. The thing last night. I like him. Yeah, too, Alexis he's, Rocha. He's right there. So yeah, he's. Right we're there. actually waiting for the winner, um, and see what happens with Crawford and uh, and Spence because he's the number one. Uh, mandatory for the WBO. And he's an Oscar, he's yeah. Yeah, he's an Oscar kudos to your company. You've kept him busy, and the young man has just gotten better. Yeah, yeah, better yeah, and better. yeah, yeah. And, oh, plus, plus, we're signing, we're signing three hot, hot Mexican prospects uh -oh. with Beltran. There's one fighter that I love. His name's Picasso. They call him Picasso. Fought Saturday. He, he fought Saturday. Good, tall, lean, he lanky looks puncher. really, really. Well, yeah. One twenty-two is it? Yeah, what? and he'll grow into a lightweight. He'll grow into I saw a lightweight. He's good. There's yeah. another kid that fought on that same card um, um, who's a tall kid. He's like 6'1", 6'2", and he fights at 135. He'll grow into a big kid, but he has power and, and, and awesome. doesn't run. He's just like right there. So yeah. me and Fernando from Tijuana, we we uh, we uh, we have a good thing going. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna come back strong, or we're we're coming in strong. Yeah. This this later half of the year. I love I love to see it. And I already told you, Oscar's gonna be like Aram ninety five out here promoting. <laughs> I'm gonna be right there. Oh, yeah. I'm right there. <laughs> you know what's funny? Oscar's one time. So I'm not doing that. You know what? Bob used to say the same same thing. 30 sure. years ago I've seen interviews and now I get the sense Bob without work I, he'd, oh, like, yeah. he'd be bored to death yeah. he actually loves yeah. the sport because yeah. we've gone to fights that he's not even promoting or we'll watch fights together at the house because he, oh, he yeah, really man, loves man, the I sport it, so man. that's what's great man all right, well, so we'll talk to everyone it. next week. We want to thank our fine sponsors, Hustler Casino, <clears throat> Scout Micro LA. And again, if you want to sponsor our fine show, please uh, email us at info at boxbid.io. Oscar, thank you very much. Thank you know you, you have an open brother. invite here. Yeah, no, drop appreciate by it, anytime. Appreciate it. That yeah. was fun, bro. And fuck Eddie Hearn. Oh, <laughs> party, <laughs> a party shot. All right, well, that's hey, it for this week. Here we go. The three knockdown rule on UFC Fight Pass. Goodbye, everybody.